Oke. Okay. Okay. Uh, thanks guys. Uh, this is my slides. Uh, I'm, I'm going to try my best to explain to you uh, about Django. Well, this one is skip. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that was a ruby slide. Yes. <laughs> Oh, oh yeah, true. Okay. So my name is Vinarianti. I participated uh, the previous Tech Ladies Bootcamp and I was part of the Team Asian Film Archive. Uh, before that I was a WordPress developer but I was not kind of like full stack developer so that's really my reason to join Tech Ladies. Um, to, to learn a lot of new skills which I ended up to be uh, we learn Python, we, we learn Django and we learn Ansible these three are I think one uh, very powerful it's like perhaps if Elisha said that uh, coding is a superpower these three are kind of like the recipes to become superpower <laughs> okay but tonight uh, we're, we're going to touch on these three points it's called Python's virtual environment um, I'm going to show you how to create a Django project and one of the Django features called Django Administration that comes out of the box. <laughs> so before that, um, as uh, she already uh, explained, uh, she, she showed you uh, some of the Python syntax. Uh, basically, uh, this is just a repeated. Uh, but the point is that if you use Mac, usually Python is already installed in your machine. In Windows, you will need installation, or you can go to this website try.jupyter.com to test uh, Python syntax on the fly. This is really really cool. Um, we're going to uh, now. Uh, I mean, uh, remind me if I'm too fast. Okay. Uh, this is there's this thing called Python virtual environment where you can imagine it's like a sandbox or isolated environment where you can play around and will not mess up with your system uh, and you can also manage the dependencies without dilemma and then it can also help you keep your project directory clean so on Mac right um, this virtual environment you need to do by installing this thing called pip install virtual environment virtual env and then you need to add a tool called virtual env wrapper and then you do basically you need to export your work on uh, work on home environment and you just need to source it okay so after this i'm going to create our virtual env by executing this uh, let me show you okay I'm having a tool here. Uh, for example, oh, is it big enough? Okay. So as it says here, in order for you to make a virtual environment, right? I need to do the pip install virtual env. But I mean, in in my laptop, I already have it. So what it says here when export work on home is that to set my virtual environment folder into this folder so when i type work on this you can see these are my virtual environment right and they are located at uh this envs i'm gonna show you for example this one envs nah it's the same right there's the two scoop afa uh, brave and all these things so physically they store it there and then now we're going to make a virtual environment by invoking mk virtual env and then i'm going to use the dash dash but i'm going to use this one and then the name of the virtual environment called my video block all right so basically this tool is really handy when you want to start a new Python project, any kinds of new, uh, new. And then, uh, right, and they just finish. When I finish, right, you can see that I'm in the, in the uh, my video blog virtual environment, and I'm in the code, right. 
I'm just gonna make our project directory mkdr my video block. Okay, and then okay, I'm inside, right? Wait. Okay. Now, um, sort of like, what is Django? Django is a free and open source web application written in Python. Uh, if you know Ruby, there's the Rails. It's kind of like similar. Django is the like a Rails in Ruby. So now let's do the setup Django. It's like just like one, two, three. Install, migrate, and action. Right? I'm starting all over. So right now I'm inside my project folder. What I need to do is to do pip install Django. Pip is basically like a, the gem installer. So they will help you install the Django packages to the uh, environment. When you want to know what is what are the packages that you have, you just do pip freeze and then they will tell you, oh, that means I have a Django version 1.10. Right. Yes. Oh, this one. So I just finished the project. This one. Oh, are you doing also the live coding with me? Yeah. Cool. <laughs> I hope you don't run into trouble. If I run into trouble, but if you run, there are so many uh, master here. Uh, I'm not worried. So yeah, um, okay, uh, not, not, not working, <laughs> oh no, <laughs> okay, uh, anyway, you can, you can come to me later on and then I will help you to fix, uh, where we, where we were at again, uh, here. Here. Okay, uh, what I did was like doing the pip install Django and then in order to set up a new fresh Django, what I'm going to do is to type Django dash admin start project my video blog. So it's like the project name is my video blog. Alright, then when I see there is a new file under this folder is. Uh, I will show you. How we are on the step number two, right? Creating the Django admin, uh, and then step number three is actually. Wait, where is it? Okay, so here it is. When I call Django admin start project, they will create for me. Uh, this kind of uh, is it this, one? Oh, yeah. this kind of uh, folder structure whereby the, you have the init, you have the settings, they already generate me, and then there's the WSDI URL and that thing. And the only thing you need to do to fire it up is just by. Okay, wait. I'm in this one, so I need to see the the slash. Manage pi run server. Okay. So after that, it's it's actually already running. We just need to go to this thing called local host eight thousand. Tada! And that's how you get a Django application up and running in just three steps. But we don't have anything yet, so. We are going to move on to the next slide. Uh, even though we don't have anything, Django comes with a built-in uh, administration web app. It's called Django Administration, right? Um, in order to do that, what you need to do is just running the migration. Because basically, what, they, what you need to do is that uh, you need to um, sort of like 
form the data or create the database dot manage uh, migrate right as you see they are actually creating the database tables called content types of admin altering this thing right and then the database table are still empty though so we have to create the user or so-called create super user then they will ask me okay i'm gonna i'm gonna use a finality with my email um enter a password and then done and when i'm trying to invoke the admin then they already have the administration ready for me so i'm just gonna log in with the same username and password okay wow very cool right so we have we already have the users table uh we already also have a groups here if you add some groups you can actually create one of the groups for example um, admin just admin and then you can see what are the permission that you want to assign to the person okay in this case i'm not gonna save anything all right and then we still have some more time for the magic so we're gonna create a app called post so what we need to do is just this is the super right uh, we just need to do Django admin start app post again they will add this folder called post for me and inside here they have something like models tasks for the test driven thing and then the views and this thing apps okay so after this uh, basically you already have an app and then um, in order for the server to recognize it um, oh yeah I should talk about the naming convention of an app is usually we use a plural for the app and then singular for the model and then after that we add the app in the settings.py of the app our main app here I will add it post and comma and then our apps here are the models are I'm just trying to be short here for example this one is pretty similar like the one Junji said we just put it inside the here so this post actually has a link to models user and there's a dead timestamp for when is when is it created the title and the video url for example okay next although we have the model we don't have the database table yet so again we have to make the migration for this one by saying make migrations you see here they're actually helping us to create the database migration uh, and they call it 0001 underscore initial dot py if you observe right they actually put it in here so in this migration uh, although you although you don't know anything about database right you can still actually create a Django application they help you create like oh uh, the database table called um, post and then these are the uh, the what the columns the columns and then this migration is just creating the script we haven't actually uh, migrated we need to migrate it by doing migrate that means when they say okay uh, we execute the mi migration script for you so now uh, basically you already have the table we need to somehow link that table into this administration so that we can quickly um, administrate the post admin how do we do that uh, the way is that we create this thing called post admin class inside the admin.py uh, 
admin dot ty is here, and the actually this is a really simple one. I don't even type any uh, any field or any sort of thing, but Django actually will automatically uh, generate the correct fields for your admin, right? What I need to do now is just to refresh the admin, and then suddenly, boom! You have the post here, and when you create any post, it's really, really written in the database. Who is the user? And let's say tech ladies is cool. Video URL. Uh, well, we don't have yet. Let's say go to engineer stuff. G and then save it. It's really, really written on the uh, on the database. But here as a post object, why? Because I don't have the the thing called init method that Dunchi was talking about. If let's say I have it here, then it will show here. All right. Ta -da. Okay. So that was like oh, less than about 10 lines of Django code and we already have a Django administration app ready for you to play around. So yeah, actually uh, I don't want to be overkill for tonight. So it's like uh, I can see all of you like thinking hard already. <laughs> so I don't want to punch in more codes. So yeah, actually um, within this very short, uh, how many minutes? 15 minutes. We already have a one Django application ready for you to play on, right? And it's like less than uh, 15 Django code, yeah. Um, so uh, that's about me. Um, so uh, I just want to thank our mentor. He's not here right now, but he will, he is our tech ladies mentor. His name is Martin. Um, we also have a PyLadies community um, at PyLadies.ag, and we also have Singapore Django Nuts meetup group if you are interested to learn more about Django. Uh, I'm still learning too, so I'm here to help. Uh, if you have some glitches when you set up the virtual ANV, let me know. Uh, I will help you. Uh, that's it. <laughs> okay, any questions from Mina? Any things you want to discuss about? Okay, cool. cool. If not, um, this site is super useful as an as an uh, overview of the, the Python um, community in Singapore. So, I is, is the PyLady site community more vibrant or is the Facebook group more vibrant? In PyLady Slack, you can ask just about anything. Okay, so join the PyLady Slack. Then also, so PyLady is uh, is also like a community driven kind of thing where they run workshops for Python for women. So do join the Slack group if you want to learn pick up Python for yourself as well. Um, and also join the meetup group. They run like every month, is it every month? Which one? The uh, Django Knots. Django Knots uh, sometimes once every two months. Once every two months. Yes. So it sometimes happens. <laughs> <laughs> so if not right, the best thing to do is to just ask Vina. <laughs> okay, so if there is nothing else, we will have this space until 9. So that's all the talks for today. If there, is, does anyone have any questions for anything? If not, then you know, just feel free to mingle around and we will close out this place. Thank you so much for coming. Ooh.